<laughs> Ladies and gents, welcome to The Good Show, episode 42. I'm James, joining me at the desk is Semler. I don't know if you expect it to be anybody else. Nope, not by now. It's been, what, a year we've been doing this? Yeah, we're professionals. Damn straight. And in the corner... Uh, <laughs> Two fine gentlemen. Sorry, I'm lost for words. I just... Wait. Scriff, Scriff, <laughs> Scriff, we're professionals. Keep it together, man. He isn't doing this for you. No, it's too muted. You're muted anyways. I'm muted? Yeah, we're muted. Yo, yo. No, you need to put, you need to put the producer cam on if you're going to yeah, be Yeah, I can talk you now. Muted? You muted? Nah. Were you muted? Hey, Bruno, yeah, how's it going? Muted. And Mike. I'm great, how are you? I'm dandy. You're dandy. You're a dandy. Ready to talk some esports. Yeah, fuck yeah, I love talking about esports, guys. Got some sick esports news tonight, guys. Hey, hey, hey. you're Canadian, not American. <laughs> yeah, I get it straight. Let me do the high Same thing. <laughs> All right, then. Um, yeah, so uh, what's going on lately? Uh, we'll get to that. But um, just to give you an update, uh, Draskal, Andy, and Trance are playing in the Staff Cup. Draskal, um, Andy. Trance is in the Staff Cup. He's excited. He normally doesn't get to play. He demanded that me, Bruno, and Squiff were on the show just to guarantee that he got a spot in the Staff Cup. That wall is... <laughs> over because the door's open and it's windy outside. No. Let's just close the door, man. It's, Don't it's break the studio. Nice. Make it nice. Yeah. This is our amazing poster it's wall. fucking hot in here, man. And now the poster's at a position. We're getting reflection going on over there. The whole thing has gone to shit. Professional. Very. Very professional. Are we professional? Um, but yeah, I'm pretty excited to have Trance playing, representing us in the Staff Cup. I mean, you guys played Twitch TV first, and I mean, they're so bad we can put in our B team, but now we've got the A team in there, so <laughs> she, she definitely... She definitely who? Me, who? Mike. Mike. Could, nah, it's fine. Um, all right, another then, but, uh, that's actually our first topic. We're actually going to Twitch, so let's get straight into the general news. Um, I'll say hi to chat. Uh, in a moment, I've got them up in another window. I normally just sit here reading chat these days. Everyone's just spamming sing sing. I have no idea why. Um, but we'll leave it at that. Um, Alright then, yes, yeah, so the first news of the day uh, is going to be Twitch TV top games for April. And the news that's really worth pointing out, if we can come and take a look at it, is that StarCraft 2, as Mike predicted and I said probably wouldn't happen, has beaten Dota 2. <laughs> um, so they were third in the top games. They went up one. Dota went down one. And we can really discredit this, I guess, the WCS. And Mike, what's your take on this? Yeah, I think, I mean, I thought it was definitely going to happen between WCS with GSL going on to Twitch. And then also, I mean, DreamHack uh, was also two days of a lot of streams with a lot of people watching. So mm -hmm. I think it'll be just interesting to see... Um, this month more so. Well, the qualifiers well, are this month yeah. too, so. Yeah, that would yeah, be, that's gonna be mm -hmm. the, So that's uh, going to be like two weeks of like eight hour streams with more multiple than 10, streamers yeah. as well. Like, yeah, actually, it's gonna be... yeah, those Russians. So. But, the, but the thing is, <laughs> those that's Russians. But that's more those or, Russians, yeah, but man. The content for those two weeks is more or less the amount of time that people give the WCS, but it's over multiple channels. So it's more than just one fan base because obviously it's not just ESL, it's, you know, who do WCS Europe, it's mm. going to be like us and probably uh, John that's... Dota. Empire yeah. TV versus Pro. Does Russia Blast. has the big uh, following in StarCraft, the same no, thing that no. you see in Dota too? You see, like, with, with Dota, it's like when something big is happening, the Russian stream is equal, yeah. or sometimes slightly bigger, slightly mm -hmm. smaller, depending on what teams are playing, right? In StarCraft, um, the Russian streams are usually, uh, like, a fifth, oh. a tenth to a fifth. I mean, it also depends. I mean, a lot of the Russian streamers just restream the content and don't do it on Twitch because Twitch obviously shuts them down. I know MLG had a lot of troubles with uh, <laughs> their, their arena pay-per-view stuff getting uh, restreamed by Russians, but it's not, it's not nearly as big. So, yeah. um, Which is another interesting point because if you think about the biggest games for Twitch, if half of uh, Dota's audience is Russian, yeah. it's actually like less good for Twitch to be like Dota. Like If the StarCraft audience is more you know, North American and Western yeah, European. I mean, it's more maybe money. it's worth explaining here why it's bad oh. that well, well, that sounded really it, racist. Oh. Well, essentially, yeah, I guess it does sound a little bad, but it's just if you if you run advertisements, Twitch sells advertisements, blah blah blah. You see them, uh, the ones they sell in Russia, they are they're not very expensive, so you don't make much money. Well, mm -hmm. and also the fill rates as well. 
Yeah, well, Wurzfield rates yeah. much much lower CPM. So I think as as I, I think Russian partners do get the same CPM. Really? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Is, but I mean the like the as, ads, as in as in what Twitch like you know if you're a partner yeah you even get, if you're Russian or if you you know yeah. wherever you get the same but it's CPM. about your audience that's watching yeah you. yeah of no, course, they yeah. get delivered if they're Russian they get delivered Russian ads which now what's the problem are, for the Russian audience I mean they want Russian ads or they don't want ads at all um, but I mean if they're going those, to get those ads ads like when you buy ads that are for the American audience like those are the most expensive ads. But that's not a problem well, no, for the audience. I don't think it's 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 on what how, what how expensive they are because I don't think it, it varies that much at all. It's just the fill rates. Well, for Twitch, doesn't it like the, the money they make off of Vlad's stream versus Toby's stream? It's probably only the different. Same it's probably only different via fill rates. It really? Yeah. Well, oh. like you know, it depends on how much itinerary they have for Russia, as opposed because you know if you look at like World of Tanks. They're not paying, like, you know, like the CPM that you would have to buy through Twitch for any advertisement would normally be pretty standard, right? Mm -hmm. You can't be like, oh, yeah, you know, get a discount because it's the Indians, they don't care, they're probably not going to watch. <laughs> you know, it's just like you find someone that wants to advertise and then you advertise. I thought it, I thought, like, maybe I guess I'm wrong. I thought, like, it does vary. And well, you, you get, you get a, a, a lot of different ad buyers you get like premium ads and stuff yeah and so, the premium ads are not the but, ads but the, but the thing is the premium ads the don't, don't run constantly on one channel so once you've had your premium ad hmm. it will go elsewhere and then you're you know mm -hmm. you know you'll get the the normal set because no one wants to buy premium ads just to have one guy spam it on their channel so i think it's more of a fill rate issue than anything else if it was anything to do with the russian market because i don't think selling ads over there is going to be as easy so what do you do you think for May Dota will get number two. Um, yeah, I think I think it probably would. I think it's very close, and I think yeah. Once the think, WCS yeah. finals for everything, like not the mm, not the, the original top finals, um, uh, the season one final. I think that'll be in June. So. Oh yeah, well, in that case. Yeah. I think uh, Dota I, two I, will. I agree with you. I think it'll be close just because WCS. But anyway, it's an interesting uh, kind of sh uh, shift because it is the beginning of WCS and StarCraft two, so they've bumped up to the second place. And also, you have to consider as well, a lot of the top players are probably not streaming as much these days for Dota 2, just because they don't want to, yeah, that's they're actually training. a pretty good point. So, yeah. we'll see, we'll see how it kind of levels off next month uh, and see what happens. So, moving on with general news, um, ESEA uh, has been not so much a talk of the town, but it's been featured on a couple of talk shows already. Uh, for those of you who don't know, ESEA are a... Um, an eSport gaming website mm -hmm. that offers mm -hmm. services. You can subscribe to them. Their services, I'm not exactly too sure on, but one of their services that they provided that they didn't tell the community um, was they were Bitcoin mining. Um, right. This is mm -hmm. basic, uh, just, we can talk about Bitcoin in a minute with uh, Bruno and Mike, um, but basically it's like, yeah, I'll tell you just quickly to get through some of this news. Uh, installs, you know, it uses your PC Uses your system resources yeah. mm -hmm. yeah, right, to, to do mining. things on their behalf that they're not telling you about, which was essentially make money through Bitcoin mining. When the cloud um, was running. This actually uh, hit some major uh, coverage. Yeah. Uh, it was on BBC. Wired as well. And it was on Wired, yeah. So For we, can talk, we can talk a little bit more about it, but mm -hmm. do you want to just talk about the website, Bitcoin mining? I mean, what have you guys got to say about this because it's well, pretty if, fucked if up. you want to explain yeah I'm, 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 go I'm going to go super fast into what Bitcoin says um, do you remember I'm going to start way back do you remember there was a program called SETI SETI or SETI at home which you could download a, a screensaver in your computer which would uh, use something in your computer to try to locate alien signals that was a long long time ago it was like the idea was that if everyone installed that the possibilities of actually finding alien life was um, higher. So this was kind of silly, kind of funny, uh, but Bitcoin brings about the same approach in a different way. What they're saying is, okay, we're going to use people's um, time and computer time to solve some complex mathematical problems, which are useful for another thing, and we're going to pay people for doing that, but we're not going to pay the money. We're just going to create a currency, we'll call it Bitcoins, and because you're, we're using this, we are creating Bitcoins uh, to give you. Uh, and now the question is like, why would you accept Bitcoins? I mean, who accepts Bitcoins? And this guy, the, the guy who created um, the system called Satoshi, that's the first name and I don't remember the last name, um, 
well, had very interesting mathematical models of how the rate with which bitcoins were created, and it would be like a lot at the beginning and then less, 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 basically making, a, making it a limited resource. And uh, just because it's a limited resource and it's universally accepted and people are using it for lots of times, uh, for lots of things, uh, bitcoins are getting value. Um, if you check, like last month, there was a peak where one bitcoin was worth about 240 something yeah. dollars. Yeah. Uh, it goes up and down, like pretty much everything. It's yeah. like, think about gold or any like different currency, uh, but it has its ups and downs and it's kind of like the rage at the moment. And yeah, I mean, bitcoin mining is pretty much using hopefully your own computer time to do these calculations and you get paid in Bitcoin by... To generate, well, it's yeah. like to generate hashes, I think is what exactly. they call it. Exactly, yeah. And the hash is and a the weekly lottery that pays out. Exactly, that's right. So what, they, what these guys were doing was they were installing software like... It was under the pretense to be anti-cheat software and stuff like that, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, it was an April Fool's, well, no, I think. Well, no, it's just, yeah, they're, 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 they're client as a whole. Like ESCA, for those who don't know, it's basically a subscription counter-strike where you subscribe and then you basically play in their ladder and so forth. I'm not too familiar so, myself, but they just bundled this software in. So when you've got this software on yeah. just minimizing your taskbar, doing nothing, okay. it will then take your system resources, primarily your graphics card, and just basically clock that thing as high as possible and mine Bitcoins by just using those Generate, resources. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then all the Bitcoins mined were sent back to yes, the yes, SCA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so and then uh, also to add, I mean, was it the SEA? Or was it a rogue employee? Well, well, this is where the kind of the more yeah. story is. Yeah, because originally they said something like, um, like you said something that they it said um, it was an April Fool's joke gone yeah. wrong, Sorry. and then in the document it says ESEA admits to contemplating adding uh, mining, but claims uh, to have scrapped the idea after early tests. ESEA blames unnamed unnamed rogue coder for activating it. Yeah, so I, uh, yeah. And then they pledge to donate two times the Bitcoin worth in dollars to charity. Uh, they mined like 3,000, 700 3, or something. something dollars. 3,400, yeah. I think. And, but, yeah. Yeah. It was two weeks only. So, I yeah. mean, it's not a big amount. And, I mean, it's important to emphasize. They were not taking this money from the people that yeah, were had this yeah. problem. I mean, they were just using their computers. It was not stealing, but actually using their commodities, which is pretty much... The same. I mean, it's bad anyways. It, it, it is the equivalent of stealing, though, especially you given the fact that, uh, I mean, if, you're, if you leave your computer on, it costs you X amount of dollars a day, just the electricity, mm -hmm. and then you leave your computer on with your graphics it's card running all the time. And, I mean, there were people that were posting that, like, my graphics card yeah. is kind of fucked now, guys. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't, like, there's not too much to say, but it's just ESAA fucked up, and it's kind of like, like you expect someone is getting canned over this i mean we had a we had a, someone terminated from mlt recently yeah, we'll talk uh, about for, that later, for, yeah. for much less than this and all they've done is kind of said oh like finally after trying all these different oh's april fools is this is that they finally been like yeah as a a rogue coder who took stuff that wasn't supposed to be enacted and then it is but i mean if I, it just doesn't really yeah. add up too much. So and, then, I, and on the graphics card thing, meta be just a data document. Apparently, they burn out some graphics cards <laughs> yeah. Yeah. as well. Yeah. Is, is there but any number on ESEA clients installed or something like that? Just to have the idea of the magnitude I, of how I, much yeah. you need to... I mean, I don't even know who's behind ESEA as well. It's Craig Levine and Torvald. Oh. Uh, yeah, uh, Craig, well, yeah. Craig Torvald Levine is one yeah. of them. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, but it, it, we, I, I guess we wanted to give you that uh, information more as information rather than a debate and a storyline. Well, I mean, I essentially, think people have talked like, about it a lot, but there can be legal proceedings for like this is a felony this, in the exactly, states, right? Exactly, this could be a felony. So, felony, felony, felony I, Senate, I mean, someone like, can get in a, a lot, of, a lot of trouble uh, for this, and like we said, I mean, the, like there really hasn't been much mainstream coverage. Uh, on the scale of this, I mean, BBC covering. It's, it, this? Well, I think the yeah. main thing I, is I mean, it's, I can it's bring such up a the, shame. I can bring up the BBC article on it. You yeah. know, Games Network used to mine bitcoins illegally is uh, the title of it on uh, news technology. And uh, yeah, it's kind of disturbing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the, the BBC article is good. The Wired article also is really good. And it also provides some very interesting links if you want to learn more about, you know, what bitcoins are and bitcoin mining and the whole process that was involved, how they abuse the PCs. Uh, it's it's very it's covered very well in the Wired article. 
I can't imagine so, how many people have like now done some research and learned a lot about Bitcoin. Oh yeah, I, never, I, really, I was I was looking through it all. I, I, I was like just, this knew is really about cool. Bitcoins, but I didn't really know about them, you know. And so now I. Well, it's like Faz, Faz, um, Faz, one of our well, you know, James's buddy basically comes over here to do uh, commentary once in a while for Quake Live. He's like really into Bitcoins. Like he does, he spends evenings just like playing with the market, basically trying to trade them. Now it sounds like so he's like waiting for oh, to really? see you know if it goes up, if it goes down. Or, you know he's monitoring everything. So for him it's like a very big deal. So there's multiple ways that you can go about actually making money off of this. It's really funny because they exist like uh, they started existing in 2009, mm -hmm. and just recently this year it became really really big with the boom that they had yeah. a month ago. Uh, and now it's really a commodity and people. Before the slight crash, because it went from 200 and something to 60 and then went back to 180. But there was this boom and it was always on the rise. And people were saying like, well, if like dollar isn't really strong, yeah. other currency isn't really strong, maybe it's worth investing in Bitcoins. Yeah. But as any commodity and any commodity that does not like self-regulate, that's the problem. There's a limited amount at every single time. Uh, it's very volatile. All right, and uh, just to give you an update on your question, Bruno, MetaB looked into it. Apparently, 14K people were affected. Hmm. Um, so that's how many people they so had. 14K about. people, two weeks, 3,000 something dollars. Yeah. yeah. That's decent. Okay, so uh, we'll move on from uh, ESEA being silly um, to GOM TV also being. No, okay. GOM TV begins um, uh, its broadcast of World of Tanks Korean League. This Saturday, yeah, I believe yeah. it is. Um, every Saturday huh? now. Every Saturday. It's a big deal. Every. Thank you, mystery man in corner. Um, yeah. So Gom TV, World of Tanks, Korean League. Apparently, Artosis and Tasteless commentated the first day, and will continue to do so. How was that? It was. Um, do you know? It, it, do you it, understand it, the game? By the way, it, I mean, it was somewhat entertaining, despite the gameplay I watched. <laughs> I mean, I. I, I, it was, Do you understand the game? Like, can you I mean, follow the game? I mean, there's tanks. I know that. <laughs> like, there's it's seven v seven tanks. I mean, essentially, it's like a almost like a really really slow FPS, like Counter Strike kind of thing, where you know you've got your team. There's like a capture point and shit and stuff like that, and then you go with your tanks and you capture um, the point. Yeah, there's like a capture point where you like cap, right? I have no idea. I haven't looked into World of Haven't you played World of Tanks yet? No, so I haven't. Despite oh, the fact well, you know, we're playing World of Tanks next week. And, so. yeah. oh, it's been the studio tanks. World of Tanks. Let's make it happen. Oh, no. <laughs> no, we'll do it. Yeah, fuck it. But um, <laughs> who's, who was that uh, Terran player in Europe uh, who just made a lot of tanks? What was his name? With the big beard. There's a lot of them. Oh, oh. Goody. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, Goody. Goody yeah. So was it, did they just commentate it like Goody v. Goody? <laughs> <laughs> there were a lot of really good jokes about mech and like finally real mech play and blah 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 blah. Uh -huh. But uh, well, what's well done, interesting, Jack. the studio was. Right. I mean, they were giving away like a free custom tank to everyone who showed up. But the studio was packed. The studio was more full than it was on the opening day of WCS, yeah. where like all of Blizzard, everyone was there. So there was a lot of people there. Um, did you guys watch it in chat? You know, we were, I don't think we got a delay on. So if you did, if you watched it, you can give us your opinions of your enjoyment. I am sure Artosis and Tasis made it pretty fun, though. That's that's the odd thing about it. They, they had some really good camo ties too. Like, was, uh, the ties were amazing. They had, <laughs> yeah. Um, see. It makes me just wonder about that North American World of Tanks League. I mean, when when is that coming? Who's gonna run that? It's coming, I swear. I, I don't know what's going to happen, but there has to be a North American World of Tanks, Tanks League. League. I mean, ESL has been running like the yeah. World yeah, of well, Tanks ESL for ages. Would love that. It was at CBA. Yeah, there's ESL a stage will take there, the blah, blah, blah. Contract. I think NASL will get into World of Tanks. I think Clutch is on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, He's up to speed on <laughs> Yeah, so everyone said it was shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> in chat, basically. I mean... I don't know. No, I mean, it had like 3,500 viewers on the Twitch stream, and like, I think most of <laughs> the people were tuning in to be like, what's this like? And uh, it was like, yeah, uh, it's just like, wow. It just looks like Artosis is dying on the inside. Of yeah, there, the there was a really funny screen <laughs> that made to the top of our I mean, I, 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 I spoke to Artosis, Artosis, and I was trying to figure out who Artosis is. And so I asked him, I was like, you know, what are you? And he, uh, he said to me in, um, in the bar or when we're having a meal, he said, well, you know, Essentially, I am just StarCraft. I'm StarCraft. You know, as in like, that's well, I mean, why I'm here. Well, I mean, they brought up a lot of StarCraft during it and plugged oh, a lot they? of StarCraft. And, <laughs> they were like, and know. if you guys are interested in 
tanks. You should check out this game. StarCraft <laughs> 2. I'm sure the World of Tanks guys were thrilled. Um, all right. Well, we'll see how that continues, World of Tanks. Um, apparently, you could just buy your way in. Picture of Sadness, we've got a link yeah, here. So we it. can take a look at it, guys. I'm sure you've got it in chat. But um, Artosis <laughs> really does look like he's having a blast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, please. Uh, I think like, there's some funny tweets. It's like TLO tweeted, like, you know, <laughs> blink twice if you <laughs> need yeah. saving or something. Um, I can't remember exactly. But that's uh, some of our general news. We're actually going to go into Counter Strike Go now and also some Quake Live just to give, make sure that they get some decent coverage. appearance. Yeah, yeah. coverage. That's a, that's a better word. I like that word. Good word. It is. Um, so, Counter Strike Go first. Um, the biggest news in Counter Strike Go is actually just based around DreamHack, but it is quite interesting because it does relate to some other tournaments. Uh, Counter Strike Go at DreamHack are going to be using a new group, group system. So, the group system they're going to use is going to be kind of like GSL. It's basically yeah. just a four, four team group, Wait, which is kind double. Of, or it is the same? It's pretty much GSL. It is the same. Okay. Yeah. It's the same. So, it's just a double limb for a uh, four man group or four team group. Mm -hmm. um, Last year was round robin, and when you have round robin, you may have noticed at some of DreamHack tournaments that they've been flipping coins um, to decide who goes through. Uh. So CSGO this time is actually going to move on to this, and this is also not just interesting for Counter Strike Go, but also is this going to be where StarCraft is heading and some of the mm -hmm. other tournaments that they're going to run. Um, so let's just talk about that before I go into some more information, um, but guys... Coin flipping versus is, CSL. Um, I mean, are ties more common in CS or? Uh, but you still play normally a best of three. Mm -hmm. I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah, I think. That, there are some tournaments that are only best of one and yeah. you just only count the maps, right? Are you yeah, looking at you somewhere because you are the CS GO guy here. Yeah, but. I mean, that no. the sometimes if there's like an eight eight team group, it's definitely like best of ones. Mm -hmm. um, and then if it's like normally they do four teams though. And it's, yeah. So. But even with best of three, you huh? can get. Hmm. Sorry, uh, even with best of threes, you can get ties. You know, um, well, the possibility situations. is there. Whether it happens often or not, though, I couldn't say. Mm -hmm. like, that's the thing. Well, you, Scriff, like, have you ever heard of that happening very often in well, 1.6? It depends. Have you got mm -hmm. a mic? No. no. Well, that's pathetic. I, I you got the mic right I there, don't you? Three. Yeah. But Hello? <laughs> <laughs> on mute rest of soundboard. I uh, hope you can hear me, but yeah, basically if it's a best of three, you can't get a fucking draw. Because if it's a drawing game in rounds, 15-15 in rounds... It keeps just, going into yeah, overtime. Yeah. It just well, goes overtime and until <coughs> someone wins. And then it's a 2-1 or... Yeah, you know. yeah I, I'm, actually read, one, I'm actually reading the single yeah. limb playoffs will use the best of three format, so it doesn't indicate actually the group stages could be best of one, but that would be a bit weird. Um... I would hate to be in a best of one tournament. Well, depending on how many is in each group. Yeah, it's only, it's, only, it's only four teams It has teams to be four, group. I mean, this format yeah. isn't... Mm. I, I mean, we can come to the uh, article on HLTV. Um, actually, this format was suggested by Lurpis, uh, the Finnish player. Apparently, he's with HLTV. Um, so he did an article on it. Um, also worth mentioning with the tournament, uh, top eight uh, payout, yep. which is uh, getting better, because DreamHack were quite top heavy yeah a yeah. lot on uh, not long ago um so this is uh, pretty decent 8200 for like first place 23k total I and think. if you yeah if you're not too sure what we mean by the uh, group stages it's basically the green teams are winning so this team will go through automatically because it's like you win two games in a row you go through um and then if you lose a game you know the this team will drop down here Etc. So it's just GSL, really. Yeah, just I mean, it's it's a hello. It's a four-team double elimination bracket without the finals being played. Just the two teams advance. So yeah, I, I, what's going to be interesting is just um, it, it's going to be hard because it's funny when when people like criticize tournament formats and so on. There's kind of a period of time where like MLG got rid of extended series for like part of their bracket. So it's just like in the open bracket, you could have extended series, and then in like the championship groups you could have it but then not in the bracket or something mm. and and it's just like well all the, you've kind of opened pandora's box you've kind of admitted there's faults with this format and so now with with dreamhack using this type of group for one yep they're, they're missing it in a way as well are, are yeah. like people like every single starcraft player who's going to be like well can't we wh why why are we using this format when you've accepted it over here mm -hmm. like so it'll yeah. be interesting to see what they do because i mean 
So, I mean, we talked about it last time, right? And I just think having GSL groups is better for pretty much every game. I mean, I just mm -hmm. just as, primarily for broadcast. There are two if you lose, if, Yeah, I mean, if you lose twice in a group stage as a player when you've only got four people in your group, and it's not like the final four people that should win the tournament, it's seeded, yeah? Yeah. yeah? If you lose twice in that, you definitely shouldn't be going through. The mm -hmm. only thing that you can do off that that I think might be a little bit fairer is to take top three through and have a playoff match, third v second from another group and second v third, you know, and, and mm -hmm. just to make sure yeah, that, like that the group might not be stacked. But as long as the seeding is fine, the, the format's great for players because it should get the best through. You know, you have no excuse, basically. Um, the, only, the only downside is, uh, I think is the only downside of this, is you can lose um, to like a team once and then yeah. when that team goes to the finals and drops back down you have chance to readjust and then beat them and, and qualify exactly. if they don't win the finals the team you lost to in the first mm -hmm. round right. so you actually get this section where it's like okay we like you know say dota for example mm -hmm. say pandas pandas lose to eg eg, EG go to finals versus mouse, mouse. They play they, and then eg lose and then pandas win their game and come back up pandas might actually be able to put up a better fight second mm -hmm. time round based off knowing a little bit about EG. And then if EG would then lose that, they've literally gone 1-1, one, one, but EG are out. Yeah. That's the only downside I can see to this in terms of like... Exactly. And, and you, know, you know what that argument created? That's the main criticism. What? You know what that argument created, right? Well, that created extended series. That's, uh -huh. yeah. that's why... Because it's... I mean, any double elimination bracket has that, right? Yeah, you yeah. Mean, it's... Like, so... Yeah, I mean, that is, I, I mean, personally, I don't really see it as a problem because it's like, it's like saying all matches are equal and like, why is a round one match, like a, a round three match means more than a round one match. So you, you may have been 1-1, one, one, but you lost the important match. Yeah, that's what yeah, I'm, yeah. The, the thing, that's the thing. I so, mean, if you yeah. have, like, let's say you're the best team in the world, but you lose always to this team. Uh, the way GSL goes is like, you can avoid that situation depending on how you're yeah. seated and you, that. But I mean, really, it's such an unlikely scenario that it's so much better than Rambo yeah, in general. But at the same time, like, I still think it's the best because it's, cause the other flip side to that is like, if you win your first game, you have a chance to qualify. Mm -hmm. If you miss that mm -hmm. chance, you know, it's, but at least you had that chance. The other guy who lost versus you is playing for their tournament life in terms. So, yeah. um, but anyway, so yeah, Counter-Strike Global Defense is going to be using double limb formats with four-man groups. Uh, 23,000 euros up for grabs. Um, obviously, this is going to be a dream hack. Not sure who's doing the coverage or the broadcasting for it, but I'm sure dream hack will give you more information. So moving out of Counter-Strike Go, going straight into another FPS game, Quake Live. Um, Quake Live, there's basically just two tournaments running constantly. Um, well, there's a little bit more in two, but two that people are talking about. There's the Face It. Mm -hmm. um, there's also 125 FPS, which uh, is actually Russian run, but we're going to talk about Face It. Um, so they've been doing European tournaments and even daily cups. And they used to do just like a weekly thing, which was mm -hmm. like Zotac, right? I don't know if you remember Zotac, but they just get like $100 yeah. or 100 euro yeah. a week. Zotac, uh, yes. And it was every Sunday. And lots of people played in it, you know, the normal faces. You got Cypher, Strength, not anymore so much, but used to a lot and win a lot. Um, Face It have now decided, you know, after that period, they opened up a season where you would have these would equal points every Sunday and then you go into the finals and it would be like eight players at the finals. But it was only really open to Europeans in terms of it was fairer for them. Uh, Face It have now um, opened up a North American uh, season. Um, the winner takes home $50 per uh, tournament as opposed to the 125 in Europe. Um, Obviously, they get points just like the Europeans on top eight finishes or, you know, for the Sunday Cups mm -hmm. or whatever they do. Um, what is, though, important about this is that Face It have said that they will fly out the number one, like, American to Europe to compete against the Europeans. Um, I spoke to Sturmy, uh, who spoke to Roy Chez, and I was like, is it top one or top two? And it's definitely top one. I don't know if this means there's going to be a LAN finals or they're just going to have him in the studio in Italy playing from there for <laughs> interviews and stuff because otherwise you have to bring eight people together. Yeah. Um, to give you an idea of who's playing in these cups, uh, Cypher won the last season, uh, which was the first season for Face It, uh, followed by Pavel and Kula. So coming out of America, I don't know. I don't, I don't know who's going to top that at all. I really don't. Is Rafa still playing? 
I don't think he, I'd maybe for $50. <laughs> I, don't I don't know, know what's going on in like, Shumania these like, days, that's right? A, yeah. Yeah, that's but point, I mean, but still, it's just, Rafa was who is still playing, playing a lot in the of, US. Yeah, Rafa was playing quite live and saving all his money to go to college. That was his goal. Like every prize, bit of prize money he got, he just wanted to go to college and not have debt. That's um, so I don't know what he's, you know, $50, I don't know. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, that's, that's face it, opening the North American vision. But they are the pretty much only big thing to talk about in quite live. I've got a few more, but I don't know if I should even ask, what do you guys no, think No, I mean, of it's it, cool that it's... they're expanding that. And, uh, it'll be interesting them bringing someone over. But that's the thing. I mean, it's it'll like... kind of make it interesting to watch because, I mean, it's like... I Just mean, other esports, nice story. you can watch Europe, North America. It's not that big a deal. Dota, StarCraft, it's fine. But the latency with Quake, it, you impossible. can't, right? So Yeah. It's also going to be really interesting to see what kind of new talent uh, turns up. You know, like who is still playing at a top, tip top level in the North American scene? And yeah. are there, is there any new blood that may be able to have this chance as, as their breakout chance? I think that's the meal, the real interesting point. It's really hard to new talk about blood new blood. Quake. Yeah, in yeah. Quake. It's new blood. New people new playing. Blood. Oh. I've just got to check on something, guys, before we go into back into news. Apparently, the, the good studio team are losing without us, Bruno. Oh, Jesus, guys. Well, that's what someone said in chat. I'm trying who to find. Is, who are they playing uh, against? Like, because you already Trans. beat Twitch. They're playing against, like, Hotbid. What, why isn't Trans? Right. They're playing against Team Liquid right now? What do you see? Is it like Hayoka? Bring, I'm bringing up Bobo's stream, right? We're going we're gonna to stream snipe this guy. Fine. Uh, totally legit. Someone. All right, James, you get you uh, get to wait for the sad to finish, then you get a minute, and then you get to mourn the fact that you guys are gonna lose this game because Trance is bad, and then then we get back on topic. First time we let him play, and he loses. Right, the game is paused. Does he have his venom? It's reverse game? captain's mode. Let's just take Four, a quick six. look at this. Uh, we've got Naga, Earthshaker. Um, sniper, skeleton. Naga King, is Naga and Slarder apparently are the. You can't pick all. Oh no, this, you can't this, pick this all not... melee heroes in reverse captain's mode. By the way, you can only have like three, I think, melee heroes. Oh, sounds like we're gonna need a walk over win. Yeah. Uh, well, no, that, that's us picking that team. So yeah. Oh well, it sounds uh, like uh, it sounds like it's too bad. This is obviously going to be Wepaz or Andy. Yeah, that's Wepaz. Andy will probably be this. Oh god, please. Chances are shaker. Trance is Earthshaker. Yeah. All right. We'll see if they win. We'll check in a little bit later, guys. We'll leave it there um, <laughs> for the moment. <laughs> Have to in... go back and save the day. Dude, seriously. Take over Trance's computer. Mm -hmm. Suddenly. Just crash the servers, Bruno. You know how to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but call in a favor. I'm saving it for later. All right. So hmm. uh, also in Quake Live, uh, DreamHack normally do Quake Live every tournament they do. Why are there really hot chicks on you? This is the world of tank host. But, oh like yeah, man, that's actually the <laughs> love forget taste those. That's why you tune in for world of tanks right there. Wait, man. Where, where is this? Where's chat? Chat will share. Chat, chat will deliver. Share. Yeah, wait, 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 wait. We're sharing. We're hmm. sharing. We need a mirror right there. All so right. I can see Fucking love world of tanks, by the way. Good studio. <laughs> very interested in getting involved. Um, that's a very tanky outfit. Yeah. Just take a moment. We'll be going for a break now, just for five minutes, and we'll be back with the next segment. Three is fine. Oh, we're not, well, we've actually got Three some fight. I was waiting for it. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Anyway. Wait. Uh, yeah, Quake, sorry. My train of thought. Yeah, was uh, DreamHack yeah, still focus. Yeah. looking focus for a sponsor? Yeah, so or? DreamHack normally do um, uh, Quake Live every tournament, even though it's yeah. one of the hardest ones to sell. And so apparently what? they're still looking for a sponsor. This came out with Robert Olin, I think, on a talk show. On Climbing the Ladder. Climbing the Ladder, ladder with ladder. Chanman, yeah. Um, one of the people I thought would be great to sponsor it is Face It. Because I don't think people realize Face It is not just a coverage hmm. like platform. It's actually uh, a gaming platform where you, you know, play as a community against each other. I don't know exactly what the rules are and what mm -hmm. they're trying to achieve, but they do need some marketing or maybe just some good messaging because I don't understand what they're doing. Um, so it might be an idea for them to cover it because they've been covering a lot, but we have, but there's no guarantee on uh, Quite Live with DreamHack. Please, Something someone. Last year, it was Kingston, right, last year? Yeah. Yeah, it was Kingston. Yeah. And we so. remembered them because of it. Exactly, Kingston, look at that. Yeah. 
Kingston's marketing dollars hard now. at work <laughs> <laughs> right and, here sorry guys yeah, and the last thing in Quake Live is uh, 125 FPS May League is announced uh, which is basically a Russian version of like kind of face it if you mm. can imagine that uh, pay rubles um, it's mostly the same players like, a lot of people do still play in it um, but what is weird about this one is they're doing they're accepting donations and they're adding that to the prize pool so if you come first, you get 40% of the donations. If you come second, you get a percent Whoa. of donations. So Is that the whole price pool? Right? No, there, there's some lovely rubles in there as well. Probably, I don't know, worth 50 bucks or 20 something. 20 bucks, yeah. But this is when you need to like send it to a shake or something and be like, hey, you know, there's this really cool FPS game out there and they're accepting donations right now. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Oh, money. 50K donation. <laughs> all of a sudden, the pot looks good. Nice. Yeah. And uh, that's really it for all our general CSGO and Quake news. Yep. And that leaves us one hour, 20 minutes, where we divide it perfectly, 40 minutes and 40 minutes between StarCraft and Dota 2, starting with StarCraft. Are you happy with that? You're not going to fight in the corner over there, right? 40 uh, minutes each? We can work with that. We can do that. I'd be amazed. Hi. All right. StarCraft 2 coming up next on The Good Show. We'll see you in just a moment. Thank you. Welcome back to The Good Show. Uh, before we get into StarCraft, a Dota update. The Good Studio team are 12,000 gold behind at 18 minutes. It's fucking pathetic. And I'll take a few seconds off Bruno's segment. Oh, well, it's 43 okay. now, so... I'm not, I'm not going to bend for you, right? I'm going to break my back. I already bent for you today. Wow, <laughs> this is gay. <laughs> oh, man. I, bro I, bro is... I broke his glass uh, in his room, actually. Yeah, I he did. glass off, and then you his said... glass all over my floor right now. It wasn't now. the British one, was it? No. Okay. I don't know how I did it, but uh, I just kind of You're fell. capable of amazing things. <laughs> Thank you. I um, was a clumsy one in the house. All right, let's get into some StarCraft 2 as soon as I bring the document back up. Uh, obviously, Apollo's here. There Hello. He <laughs> Hurrah. Hey, Apollo. Hello, Your guys. Your hair is not as uh, My hair is flat perky. today. It's, uh, uh, it's just come out of the you shower. You look so hair. much better when you wear your hair down. I actually prefer it up. <laughs> for the weekend he's got no inflict. spunk when it's down like that it's a little spunk you just, why don't you wear it up then if you don't if you was it's it come out of at that time no I don't know do you prefer it down do you James yeah he's never gonna put it up again <laughs> anyway Apollo's in chat as obviously he's got his laptop there <laughs> so you're more than welcome to give him your feedback <laughs> on his hair um, but we're going StarCraft 2 uh, we're gonna go non WCS to start with to kick us off it's actually just balancing of maps um, so there's a couple of changes uh, I'll bring up the website and I'm sure Mike will say if it's shit or good uh, Mike what's going what the fuck is this this is like that it's the call to arms James Okay, well, I'm not bringing up the website because this is horrible information. Oh, uh, basically, what? There's the two, three, three. Changes. So, but we can read them off. Spore crawler damage increased to bio. Uh, burrow research cost has been decreased, I think, to fifty fifty. Yeah. And oracle speed and acceleration yeah. increased by one, I believe. Yeah. No. So, um, so, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, guys, what does this mean? Come on, there's a lot of people out there who are just like, I don't know how to play StarCraft All right. because of these changes. Lighten us, Jensen. Lighten like, us. They're lost. These two changes, small, not too big. Uh, David Kim's a big fan of uh, these changes. He's been on <laughs> about them for a very long time. Um, when I met with him, I'd be like, so? Uh, I Void Rays are really good at that point where they were really strong. I'm like, Medivacs are really fast. And he's like... Spore crawlers are really bad, and I was like, "Whoa, okay." That one caught me by surprise, and he was very insistent about spore crawlers. He uh, and I actually, even though I joke about David Kim, um, I actually believe and trust him in a lot more, having met him and seen stuff he's told me develop in the game, saying eventually we'll see this, and it actually happened. Um, but he thinks the spore crawler damage increase is to help out Zerg with Zerg. Exactly. Well, so it's more only, like a ZBZ sort it's of only thing. impact ZBZ. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's what he, that's what he's hoping it. And basically, I think that's why there's no Hydra change or anything, because they don't want to affect the other matchups. So now, uh, I mean, Mutas get three shot. Yeah. Yeah, Mutas get three shot. So Whoa, we'll see what it increase. does uh, to ZBZ. Um, I don't know. I don't think it's going to be a big... I don't think it's going to work the, the, way, the way he thinks it will. 
unfortunately. I, I feel like it may just kind of prolong games and the meter ball just gets bigger because you, you have to be more passive. The like... problem is, with that change, is that it zones certain areas, but the, the area that it zones is very small. A spore crawler doesn't cover a large radius. Um, and, the, and the big thing is, yes, you can lock down two bases, I feel, with spore crawlers, which is well intended to do, but it's about establishing a third base, establishing a fourth base. And if you get slowed down because they're so small, which will happen, I still feel, um, that's where it'll just already be out of control. You have too much gas for the other player. Bailings come in. I, I'm not sure if it'll fix what he hopes it'll do, but he's trying something. <laughs> I have so much faith in David Kim, but I don't think it's going to work. I mean, I trust him sometimes. <laughs> this one... <laughs> kind of backpedaling well, now. Right, I, don't th I don't think it's a... This one change... So, yay or nay? Nay. Um... I'm going to be in the middle because I want to see it. I just haven't played with it, but I... Nay! I nay! Completely neutral. Nay. nay! Nay. I don't like it. Nay. All right, I so told him. I told let's him. go for the second one now. Burrow research cost has been decreased from 100-100 to 50-50. Uh, the reasoning for this is... Uh, a quote from him was saying that I really enjoyed, and I think everyone really enjoyed early games when Zerg players used it for rushes. Rush the games attacks, were exciting. Probably. They developed, and the game continued from there. It didn't kill an opponent, but they you know, changed the game up a little bit. So he wants to make that a little bit more accessible. Uh, and also he thinks it also could help against the Mutalus situation because there could be more roach timings that come out which once established themselves on the opponent's base can borrow up and down yeah. and micro so on. One thing that's really stuck out from what you said here, if we just go back a moment, is, um, is your sock. Yeah, you like it? Yeah, it's very nice. Can we see your other what's, sock? What's your other sock look like? Uh, <laughs> dun, dun. <laughs> Oh dear. Uh, I'm so, the king of all Ste Stefano weighed in on this actually, uh, saying that he thought that this hey, would I'm lead into. Yeah, I, I, I noticed. James, so, can you this, stay on topic, that, please? This would lead into um, more uh, options open to the Zerg player in the other matchups as well. He saw it, you know, him using this in other matchups like P uh, versus Protoss or versus Terran as well. Yeah. Do like, yeah. you think this is going to really just open up the Zerg toolbox in the early game? Well, I think primarily this affects ZVT. Yeah. That, I mean, it's not, it's not just about Zerg versus Zerg, but yeah, it will affect the other matchups. I don't think it'll do that much, though. Mm. I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, I, at the same time, if you look at Pro versus Protoss, cannons detect Borrow anyway, so it doesn't well, make it's too a matter much, of, I mean, if but you... it's more against Terran. Well, go ahead, Mike, what do you but think? The, but against Terran, if you, you play Terran too, is that if you don't have a complete wall off, then you're going to die anyway. If you do have a complete wall off, I'm still uncertain you're going to break through it, even with the Borrow research. Okay. And so, Mike, you had something yeah, to add? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I, I think this change affects uh, Zerg versus Terran the most. We'll, we'll see. It's just going to make those... Like, we saw them a little bit. I, m I remember very specifically some games on Daybreak where you had Burrowed Roaches, you know, blocking the command center and just delaying the expansion as much as possible. And then, I mean, Protoss probably not too much, but it's still possible. I mean, if you can just have seven Roaches with Burrow and just focus down the cannon and Burrow and then on Burrow and focus down the next cannon being built... It's possible. Uh, it's not a huge change, though. Uh, so. Well, real quick on the last uh, change, which is Oracle speed and acceleration has been increased. Um, thoughts uh, on that real quick? The change, the, the reasoning. I've met David Kim, so I know the reasoning behind all the changes. Wait, wait, wait. I don't think we met that. David Kim. Did I've done him? an interview with him. If you want to go check out Yo, my YouTube channel. I met YouTube. David Kim, too, so fuck this guy. <laughs> if you want to go check out my YouTube all he channel. Did was kiss his ass. So. I feel like I'm the only one who hasn't met him yet. Have you met him? Well, apparently everyone's fucking met him. <laughs> have you, met David, have you met, met David Kim? Have you, Scriff, have you met David Kim? Sure, yeah. <laughs> this group is actually David Kim's second cousin, so... Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, the, the, the reason... Hold on. The reason for the uh, Oracle change, he wanted to uh, go ahead and... You're worse than Bruno, you know that, right? Bruno talks about Valve and what they do in a way that he, like, knows. You're literally, like... You're literally now saying what David Kim has said. You're putting, you know, so you've got to get this right, because if David Kim's watching and you say it wrong, yeah, know, right? he's going to... So, just telling you, it's a big thing to say. This is the way you're going to say it. So, get it right. David Kim <laughs> said, said, he Exclu wants yeah. exclusively, exclusively to me. No one else. Not <laughs> <laughs> uh, he wants to re uh, reward Protoss players that are fast at playing. So, or, obviously, if the Oracle speed is higher, it's going to demand more actions when you play to be able to do what you do at home and also use it to a high success wants to promote more Oracle usage, basically, because it's only used every, enough every other 20 games or yeah. something, you know, so. And then, I, I and think then primarily it's, uh, it's a good change 
to see more use in the late game with Revelation and uh, Envision. I, okay, yeah. well, we'll see how it works. Um, and uh, congratulations, by the way, on uh, meeting the uh, DT. DK. 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 Damn. Almost. You're so close. I met anyway. Donkey Kong himself. <laughs> Moving on. Um, Shoutcraft, the Invitational, has uh, America. been announced. It was America. not an Invitational, yes, yeah, by the way. Just... Oh, it wasn't? No, no they took uh, the top 16 uh, Grand Masters. But they invited them. Were... <laughs> All right. You win this round there, buddy. I, I'm on TeamLiquid.net, and it says the Shoutcraft Invitational. Really? Uh, but, it's, but it was also slash Shoutcraft, uh, Shoutcraft America, so it's probably that. I don't oh, know. because it's, the, but, it's like this is under a series of tournaments, but yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, they so, invited the top 16 uh, mm-hmm. North American. What do they do, Mike? In, Grand Master in the they, ladder. How, how did they get the top 16? They in they laddered. <laughs> Damn it. Anyway, let's go back to the groups and I'll stop derailing this. Um, you said invited, okay? I was trying to make okay, you say it again. You're welcome. All right. Uh, these are the groups. It's a $10,000 tournament, uh, which is the limit you can do uh, without uh, having to kind of Breaking the Blizzard police yeah, rules. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. So I guess what we really just want to look at this is, because um, we talked about it being announced, didn't we, last week? Yes. So this is more about what stands out in the groups for you guys. So Apollo and Mike. Well, and I have a, 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 a counter uh, a kind of... I mean, stuff. I mean, the, the, the more interesting Which thing about... Which okay. player, for you, when you look at the American StarCraft scene, is missing? Right. If you uh, were to generalize, yeah, exactly. Right. Why is he not top sing, top sixteen grandmaster? Because and for me, he makes more money going on Twitch TV, calling people uh, noobs, and just getting lots of viewers and being like, ha 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 ha, money. I was because surprised. every time he does it, he gets on. He, he was trying to be in this. And he, he tried. He was in the top sixteen for uh, the majority of the time, but then he went on a big losing streak and. Mm. I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know. I wasn't watching a stream too much, but I mean, someone could have. Really easily, like someone really good could have kept him out of this tournament by just constantly sniping him. I think Something. it doesn't help Idris' cause that he just leaves every game he has against a Muslim and just loses points like that. Really? So, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, but, I mean, that's for me looking at American StarCraft. I just kind of feel that he's missing. But I mean, Total Biscuit's trying to promote this is American StarCraft. Or well, at least you know it's kind of weird of that he's America. done that as well because at the same time he was on <laughs> WCS America doing some tournaments there. He, Axiom, you know, Jenna's team also. Well, his team is part of the reason why there are so few Americans in. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. And then, and then he's like, hey guys, this is, you know, America. So it's, it's like, it's like you've created a shitty situation to yeah. save it <laughs> and look good. I, I don't understand, but like, I, it's still clever and I, I think it's a great tournament, but. It is Jenna's, it's Jenna's tournament. tournament again. Yep. She's everywhere these days. Yep. Mm-hmm. There's a tweet who's Big like waiting for face. TV to get the credit for this. Get your fucking shit together. Yeah. Shut your face. Stop reading chat. You only know that because no, chat no, told you. <laughs> also, I don't think it's a good representat- uh, representation of American StarCraft because it misses Scarlet, Huck, big names that are not in America at this point. Yeah, so the, the people... title of it is, who is the best of the best American StarCraft? But, well... There's a lot of people missing because they're in career and, and stuff. They, so they, it, they couldn't actually play in the qualifier because they, you like basically they oh, yeah, because it was short notice. They didn't have accounts in Grandmaster, yeah. so they couldn't ladder up to the top sixteen because Grandmaster was locked. Yeah. You know, what's her name? Is it Jenna or Gina? Jenna. Yeah, Jenna. It, but it's Gina. It starts with a G, right? That doesn't necessarily mean that it's a G sound though. Mm. It's, it's like how ends. Jeff it's can start ends. with the G as well. Oh. You yeah. know. Did you say Geoff? G- like, so, yeah. Gina. Yeah, okay, we're, um, we're done. You're we're, on a timeout, big guy. Yeah, okay. You're so, derailing us again, James. No, I, I think the other big topic with WCS or Shoutcraft America is that, um, you know, when TV po- made a post on, on Reddit like 12 hours before, it's like, it's time to find out if people want to watch American StarCraft. Oh, yes. Yeah, and it's like, time. the numbers he's getting, he got very good numbers, 40K with production problems and Twitch problems lag. apparently, oh, although like apparently it wasn't lag. Twitch, I don't know. Yeah. Um, it's not but, these it's, guys. but it's like when, when people say, <laughs> or when he says, like, do people want to watch American StarCraft? Well, it's like... Do he, people want to watch him and Husky? <laughs> exactly. Like, him and Husky are promoting the shit out of this. Um, yeah. I don't think if, if MLG was doing the exact same thing with these players as opposed to yeah. their mix of invites plus Koreans plus whatever else, they would get near the viewership so it doesn't really answer the question of 
It's very do, misleading. And, and it also, the other, combined with the, the Husky and TB factor pulling people into watch, it's the fuck WCS factor where NASL got, you know, 12K, 14K people watching them cast the Go for StarCraft tournament just because people want to come out and support them because they, you know, support them for supporting them, right? So, yeah. I mean, a lot of people were tuning into this because it's like, oh, I want to support this because I want to support this scene. And, yeah. and, and a big part is the backlash from WCS. If he had just kind of done this, like, um, two months before WCS and said, do people really want to watch American StarCraft? Yeah. Numbers wouldn't be nearly Five what they ten. are. Tall Biscuit right. tweeted so. saying, hit about 40k viewers across all streams at one point. This yeah. was after he'd finished the broadcast. I think Carmack kind of nailed it. He says, the main dri driver of viewership and readership equals relevance, not only show, I mean, not only show quality. Um, and it's basically, you tune in to watch Tall Biscuit and Husky riding a hype train that is WCS failing. Everyone wants to see in a weird way, WCS do bad, and so people that are doing content outside of WCS are very hyped towards watching it, whether it be the Muslim streaming who didn't get into WCS, or the people yeah. that didn't get but in. W w yeah, we also mentioned as well, people were gonna watch this just to see um, you know, what would happen in terms of viewership-wise for a tournament outside of WCS. Mm. So I think, yeah, all right, we'll leave it at that, we'll move on. Um, so Meet Your Makers are supposedly dead. Uh, Mim? This sounds like more of a general news topic. <clears throat> well, it's the StarCraft lineup that was posted mm. on Team Liquid. We can come to it now as well. Um, and it was also relevant as well because your makers had a partnership with uh, MVP. MVP, <laughs> So yeah, yeah. we'll just talk about the StarCraft side of it uh, to start with. I'll go into some of the general stuff I know about your makers. But Mike? Yeah, I mean, I haven't, to be honest, read too much into this. But, I mean, MYM has been very quiet for a long time. They had a sponsorship with Azubu, which always kind of <laughs> raises the the alarm bell of, is this legit? Um, I mean, like, they had Dragon on their team, and then they get sponsored by Azubu, so they try and move all their players to Azubu, and Dragon's like, LOL, and just leaves the team, keeps streaming on Twitch. Yeah. Um, so it's just kind of like, a, it's to me, I look at it, it's like it's more a matter of time when this comes out. And I'm really curious about... Uh, the MVP partnership because they had Finale, um, who's the other? Phoenix? Tails. Finale and Tails, and maybe there's one other? I don't know, but those two players are playing in WCS Europe trying to qualify, and I think by now both of them are in Challenger League. I think so, yeah. Um, so If it, not, will be. Yeah, they, I think 99% I'm sure they both are. So, I mean, if those two players qualify, and then they have no budget to get them over because they're relying on that, MYM slash Razor money, whatever else. Uh, yeah. It's going to make for an awkward situation. And of course, I mean, those players are just kind of fucked because if, if they have to withdraw from WCS Europe, they're locked into that for a year. So WCS rules say they cannot go back and try for Korea yep. for season three even. Yeah. So... Yeah, no, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I, I mean, a little bit of history on Me Your Makers. Um, they were the team that put the most ridiculous amount of money into player salaries way before EG did. Um, in yeah. terms of like ten thousand dollars a month for Moon, yeah. um, I think they also had Grabby almost in at a non-sustainable way, right? Huh? Like in a non-sustainable way. This yeah, in a really non-sustainable way. And money. then basically those uh, company owners kind of left, and I met the new company owners um, at Gamescom, and it was uh, uh, some German guys, and you know they had like a, a leaflet on their you know company what they're doing, and they seemed quite you know like they knew what they were doing. So it's quite surprising for me that they didn't really, they weren't coming out like, we're gonna do huge things. They were just like, mm -hmm. yeah, well, you know, we're gonna try run it as you know, the other teams do, making sure that we do our work. Um, so it was odd for me to see that me, your makers um, were apparently, yeah. In StarCraft though, they have almost zero relevance nowadays. So. I don't think in it, I, I think- uh, Outside of everything they, they have, like, yeah, they no. were so big in Dota. That's where, like, mm -hmm. Me Your Maker's website was huge in Dota 1. I think they had a team in the LCS, um, in, playing in, like, the promotions or whatever to try and get up there. Because I saw a lot of tweets, people saying, like, like, well, is this going to save MYM if this team actually manages to get into LCS? I've, I don't know if they made it or not. Apparently they qualify for know. LCS. Yeah, okay, yeah. so... So, so they see. have it, yeah. So uh, that, I mean, I think, I think they might just be able to run their team just off the League of Legends squad and the StarCraft might go down. Yeah. Um, but let's move on. Um, so meet your makers. We'll see what happens to them. There's no official statement or we don't really know exactly what's happening. This is the article on Team Liquid if you want to go and check it out. Uh, still outside of uh, WCS, uh, this is streaming. The Muslim, Dragon, Grubby and Stefano lead the top 50 streamers in April. And it's also another Team Liquid article. Uh, we can take a look at it. Uh, it just kind of breaks down the list and how they're all doing. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah to I'm me, not... the, the most amazing part is just some of the numbers that people pull here in terms of just hours that they stream. The Muslim had 150. Uh, Dragon had 198. I think Desert is up like 170. If you scroll down to the next table, um, it's actually sorted by viewer minutes. So these are this is the more relevant list because this is how yeah. many uh, viewer minutes. So pretty much the more relevant number. The other one is just kind of peak concurrent. So I mean, um, Max. Ms. The Muslim Black shooting and... up to number one is WCS fiasco. Um, straight up there has got a lot of following because he didn't make and it. And he's playing pretty well lately, I think. I think he's still playing as well as he always has done. I think he's always been at this kind of same level. I think level. he's played as well as he has for a while now, just sitting from home and mm. doing his thing. It's really the question, how is he going to um, play in a, more of a land thing? But, I mean, I don't see him going in any land anytime soon because Challenger League yeah. is all online, and there's nothing else unless EG wants to send him to DreamHack Summer. Like, yeah. There's, I mean, we still don't know anything about MLG. But this online. is also a product. This is one of the good things about WCS. It's a it's a product of the storyline that does drive people to people uh, the Muslim stream, for example. Yeah. And also going back yeah, actually, to actually, if we fed off a lot of uh, Idra, actually, to be honest, I mean, oh that too. Yeah. Um, there was the, the the big argument, you know, whatever what happened between both. So oh. basically, what it was is they were. I'm pretty sure in the same house when it happened, um, is that Greg. We lost to the Muslim a couple of games in a row, right? And then the Muslim then stream sniped him. The so Muslim waited said he'd stream for him. snipe if he got like 10k viewers. Yeah, something. so he like advertised himself to do this to Idra, stream sniped him. Idra rage quit immediately, didn't play the game, and from there on out, like they had, they've got this kind of negative bond right now that huh. says i mean that there's i mean people well, quoted i mean like in, i mean the muslim is now all of a sudden not on inside the game and in control kind of trying to go no yeah. fluff on it but it's they don't live in the same house anymore the muslim's in yeah. phoenix and he's in san, uh, san francisco so it's whatever no one really knows the truth of what's going on apart from inside eg um but that really sparked him up first because of this he got a lot of french pay reddit he's got a lot of Idra fans coming over blah 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 blah, blah. and then combine that with WCS, and then on top of it, I mean, he's always had a good stream. I actually, one of yeah. I've always enjoyed watching his yeah. stream yeah, for yeah, Terran, yeah. and it's always been low. It was always two thousand ish viewers, but now it's hitting almost every night, nine, ten k, yeah. almost every night, concurrent. All right, well, there you go. Um, yeah, Demison is a great personality to follow on stream. We had him over for um, DreamHack, like two thousand eleven, Stockholm. Stockholm, to cast with Sean, and he did a really nice job. It was very relaxed casting. Um, but also, yeah, WCS EU bringing out the strongest, uh, also on, sorry, also on stream numbers, just not just the players. Um, and this is the only thing we've mentioned outside of the non WCS section, which we're talking about WCS, is that WCS EU uh, are bringing out the strongest viewership of uh, WCS Korea and North America. So, and yeah. then we go into WCS. It'll be interesting in to see way. those numbers uh, for next month because this was, I think, there had only been like two broadcasts in North mm -hmm. America and so forth um but yeah wcs it's really great because you see all those numbers now everything's streamed on twitch and so yeah you mean you uh, uh gom tv is on twitch now and, yeah exactly yeah, it's still that gom tv itself its own broadcasts are still hidden we don't really know because to be honest i was actually watching a lot of gom on its own player mm -hmm. so i was counted as one of those viewers for a long time i still think a lot of the subscribers still watch on there too so it's a little bit difficult to calculate goms numbers yeah. Though you can roughly estimate it, but WCS, everyone knows everything, so it's kind of out there. The good studio, GG. Yeah. Sorry, James. Love Sorry. Can't I know that's what you've been watching. You, you've, he actually hasn't been listening to what no, he's saying. He's, he's good at faking game. it, though. Thank you. Um, all right, then, into WCS we go. Um, but yeah, when. Um, uh, when North America, it'd be interesting to see. But I still, I still think Europe will get the best viewership in a way because it's the best time zone, mm. um, best and time also zone. and the player base is yeah. so diverse and interesting, uh, which is really great. So let's move into the WCS seg segment. We've got WCS NA Challenger League qualifier results in admin being fired. Apparently, that's in the same terminated, sentence. Terminated. It should have said. The so results are in. Yeah. Admin was terminated. <clears throat> he is now dead. Um, this story is probably one of the biggest stories around WCS. Yeah. It's, it's up on Reddit. Uh, Mike, you love it when people fuck up. Yeah, Mike, you were giggling like a little schoolgirl when this was going on. You were just... 
I don't know if you were giggling like a schoolgirl. Adam, I, he wasn't. He was really... <laughs> right, right, so, so, what? so it was more of a Mike, cackle. Mike just does more of a thing. Cackle. He's just like, what the <clears throat> fuck are they doing? And then he tells the story as if he was there. And he goes, guys, I've got this great idea. He does the Let's same for yourself. <laughs> um, so, Mike, what happened? Give us a skinny. Um, all right. So, for anyone who's unaware, just to sum it up quickly, basically, Mia was given the wrong start time. So, he showed up late. He took a forfeit loss. He's an Axiom player, by the way. Axiom player yeah. started in the lower bracket, took out Sasquatch, and then all of a sudden, bam, um, Moose Gills and Muslim are playing in the winner bracket. Moose Gills, having taken the walkover from Mia, are playing, and then admins contact all three players. and are like, wait, uh, we just got information. We just got an email from your manager that, that showed an email that had the wrong time on it. So we're going to go ahead and rewind the bracket. We don't feel you deserve that, that walkover. And then, obviously, the Muslim and Moose are quite upset. Um, Mia is just kind of sitting there like, I don't know what's going on. Google Translate isn't good <laughs> enough for this. Um, you got to also mention that the Muslim and Thingy Majig I was decided. Getting, okay. I, was, I was getting okay, crap. Sorry, but, ba- sorry. but basically, the Muslim and Moose are like, look, we're going to forfeit if you guys do this. You can't. You can't rewind a bracket. You can't do that, blah, blah, blah. Face off yeah, their mistakes, the tournament's mistakes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can't punish two more players. And then so Jenna Bain caught wind of it. Um, and was like, oh my god, you already fucked my one player, now you're going to go fuck two other guys. So she's not taking the traditional like team manager role of you'll do anything for your player to kind of get them further. She's being more altruistic about it. And so she was like, look, you guys are, Mia's going to go play from the lower bracket, that's going to be it. And then basically MLG accepted that ruling, and that's what happened. MLG and then, let the team manager make the decision, that's very professional, idiots. And then... Uh, I mean, it just shows like how pathetic you are as an admin if you if the... If you, the, the manager comes in and goes, actually, no, this is what you're going to be doing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it's, like, it's, it's, it's very clear that this situation has been magnified many times over given the problems with the Premier League and that qualifier. And clearly they're mm-hmm. under a lot of scrutiny, I would imagine, obviously from the community, but you'd have to imagine Blizzard is looking at this too and probably not pleased about all that drama. And so now I think MLG was kind of like, okay, we have to do something big. So they, and, and they, they literally they poof, take him out. terminated him. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know if they took him out back, shot him. I don't know if they just pushed, pushed him, him out the window. I would have pushed him. Yeah. Well, I think that was he would have been able to get watch the New York Sundas skyline. Sundas has a great right office now. that looks over the New York skyline. If you were going to jump. <laughs> if you would love it, Apollo. That's your place. If I was going to jump out of building, it'd be in New York. <laughs> uh, um, okay. So yeah. I think that summed it up pretty nicely uh, in terms of you know a, a, a quick one. But the MLG is kind of like. Yeah, we got rid of a guy. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's kind of very... Just like that guy with gold. The guy who they probably, what, they probably didn't guy. even get rid of the guy. And he's just got a new Skype name now. And he's still earning $500 a month. Hmm. I think they did. But... He's, he's, moved, he's moved to a different game. He's doing Call of Duty or whatever he's, they he's do. Getting ready to do <laughs> he's getting ready to do the World of Tanks. Um, anyway, yeah. It's, uh, it was nice what um, uh, Gina uh, did there as well in or terms Jenna. of uh, the, the qualifier results were kind of interesting though a yeah, lot can of I bring, uh, have i got those a lot of the koreans did not make it through um some pretty big names i mean hyun yeah did that not was make the it biggest. through, which is actually amazing let, let me speak. i think i've got these as well yeah so this is the north american results this is premier league do you want me to go to the challenger yeah, no do, go to go to qualifiers okay. Qualifier. and, okay. and then go to scroll up and then go to Challenger Invite Only. This one? No. Middle one. No, it was oh, no, oh, look at this. We, Such yeah. a good website. Even I understood. It's the WCS it's portal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So these are the qualified players. Um, Jadon Fighting! So, yeah, so I mean, uh, it basically, uh, a lot of Chinese players managed to get through, which is cool. I think there were a lot of Did, Chinese on Chinese kills. So Mia didn't um, get in. But yeah, no, Mia ended up not getting in. Uh, so poor Mia is now... Having to go focus on uh, GSTL until uh, the next Challenger League qualifier, and of course, only eight players will get in. So, uh, I don't from know. here, only eight players. No, no. If you like, for the next time, oh. see this time there was a ton of qualifier players because they had none already in the league, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, now, next, next season. time, only eight more will get in. So just scroll down to the bracket, and um, you can see like who is it? Huang Sin, Korean lost. Um, Hyun lost a puck, which was big. I think there's another mm. center. Was it who lost? Maybe Mia 
there. This is the winner bracket, actually. So that's no one's actually eliminated that's here. The, that's the one that caused yeah. all the yeah, drama. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Bracket. I was just yeah. highlighting it for that. Um, and then yeah, where was the... Is this still a winner bracket? Yeah, this is yeah, the lower bracket. Where did bracket. Mia Tasia go? Lost. No, Tasia made it through, sorry. Who did, who did Mia lose to, then? Uh, Mia lost to a Chinese player. I cannot recall who. Uh, top. Uh, yeah. Oh, in the f final... Yeah, so one, one round away uh, from qualifying. So it's uh, a okay. crappy situation for him, of course. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. But um, otherwise, it's a much more interesting player pool than I thought we would see in Challenger League. I frankly expected four more Koreans, and I didn't think we'd see players like, you know, Puck and Zenicider. Zenicider, yeah. And Balls. I don't even know what the Premier League looks like in North America. Can I click this to go to yeah, it? Yeah, we'll give you permission. Go down, you'll see the groups. It's easier, I guess, to look at in general. There. Okay. That's the oh, yeah, we looked at this last week as well. Soppy, if we want to talk about, is that on yeah, the man. document to talk about uh, later or we talk about it now? No, I think the next thing we're going to talk about. We're going to Europe next and then so Korea. We could actually just segue right into it because the yeah. first one is NA results. So, yeah. I mean, Soppy right there, you see in Group D, uh, pulled off a win that I didn't think would even be possible. Fucking I think a lot amazing, of people didn't think How do you beat Hello Kitty? Yeah, that's a difficult one, right? Um, well, Hello Kitty actually beat Heart, which yeah. is that it's it's kind of hard because it's like, what's the upset that Suppy forward the group or that Hello Kitty yeah. beat Heart? Because that in itself is actually pretty shocking. And Hello Kitty actually, I got flamed so much too. Hello Kitty was one of the invites that everyone's like, what the fuck is this invite here for? And I mean, I tend to agree that he, in in my book on paper, he didn't really deserve the invite, but he did beat Heart, so he mm -hmm. at least uh, gave a good showing, which is uh, definitely good for him. But I mean, Suppy just, I mean, the game uh, it's against... It's not both uh, Koreans. I mean, both Koreans. Yeah, it wasn't even like he hit Hello Kitty or anything. Yeah. He went through Realm well, and Heart. It, I mix them up now, but well, on the big game on Belshir Vestige, that was against, it was against Heart, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, it was against Heart. And that game, it's like that game was a game that was over. Um, and then obviously we've got the results up, so you can see <laughs> there's a map, so I'm not really spoiling anything that wasn't already spoiled, but that was a crazy game. Tonight's going to be good as well. I mean, there's also, there are some quite good games. I mean, uh, the top right group is tonight's, which is Scarlet, Violet, Oz, and State, which will be another good uh, set of games. Tomorrow's got Idris group, which I think mm -hmm. we all know how that's going to go. Yeah, um, they're all going to play StarCraft. And I think Rod yeah. Rotterdam is heading over, too, to help build That's actually something we should talk about, even though we're speculating ourselves. Right, out of BC. What, what happened to Axeltos? Where has he gone? Where he, is he? He was the admin. <laughs> but he was casting Terminated. at the time. It's really hard to cast an admin at the same You have time, to do multiple so. uh, yeah. jobs in esports. I actually have solo casted last night. Like yeah, a yeah. And everyone loved it. He got a lot of uh, love for it on the Reddit too. Yeah, yeah. he did really well. He casted that big game. Axel Toss, let's uh, hope he hasn't been thrown out any windows. <laughs> and hope to see him back in action soon. But yeah, Rotterdam's flying over to New York today. I don't know. It probably is he casting a couple of days. Yeah, no, he's definitely casting. He's definitely casting some of the round of thirty-two, and then I mean, him and Mister Bitter were always planning to go and do the offline stuff. I'm not sure if it's just the round of eight or the round of sixteen as well, mm. but they're gonna head down there anyway. So who knows? Maybe Rotterdam's staying down there a bunch. Obviously, there's. Mm. I mean, there's not much to do at NESL these thanks, days, thanks guys. Let's update, not, uh, yeah, so just I mean, to make things clear, Axel Toss is actually visiting family. Yeah, it was posted on Reddit. He's on vacation. It's kind of the weird time to take vacation when the Premier League of your big tournament's going on. Mm. But, you know, if that's the case, that's the case. All right, then. So uh, we're going into EU results for WCS next. I've loaded up this. You guys can help me navigate around what, are, what do we care about. Because I care about everything on this. Um, but what specifically should we... I mean, probably. considering I mean, we spoke about it last week, we just look at the new groups. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah, not a whole lot to say. Scroll down. We're, we're oh, scrolling down again. The groups, yeah. James. The groups. Continue, continue, I mean, continue, continue. The groups playing out right now is the yeah. one that's not quite complete. Vortex, Nurture, Daishi, and Monchi. Oh, yeah, that was on in Mike's room. Yeah, that's on right now. It's still on exclusively in Mike's room. Uh, TLO made it through first place yesterday. Uh, not yesterday, last week, sorry. Yep. Um, over Naniwa. Shoal and Cass. Cass, surprise are going out, but... Group G is two one, be a, two one, a though, huge so, I mean, group to watch, I think. It wasn't yep. like Cast didn't put up a fight. It's a bit of a shame to so see just him go down the bottom, though. Two and a half days left of uh, round 32, as you can see. And scroll up to the, the prior results. I mean, just the, the round of uh, the round of 16 is shaping up to be pretty nice. It's pretty Terran heavy right now, but I think the other groups aren't too Terran heavy that are left to be played. Yeah, I mean, so the last three groups it, have got Zerg through his first place, and yeah. <clears throat> Stefano's there. Nerd Show can still go through, potentially. Um, round of 16? That's not offline, right? Or is that, it, is offline. that is offline. So, yeah. so that's what's going to... I think that's going to kind of give, like... Because WCS started, 
a lot of hype around it, and mm-hmm. now we've just kind of been in kind of the status quo. But I think there's going to be another little supercharge of hype when we actually have these players offline because yeah. all, all the different leagues, they're all trying to do stuff to kind of make up for the fact that it's online. So we're seeing, you know, Skype calls. We're seeing, like, quotes of Smack yeah. Talk and stuff. And it's yeah. all like, okay, you know, guys, I, I like your trying, but... You, you just there's no substitute for having a fucking player in the studio sitting there and a camera on them and after the game's a microphone yeah. and GSL them, right? are definitely thinking that they're playing catch up um, to GSL in Korea um, rather than trying to improve them. they're just trying to get to a level where they can improve themselves but they are doing everything step by step uh, improving day by day I think the viewership people are happy so far you know even with the online stuff it everything really basically good. hovers around it's like 25k give or take and then you're a when you factor in usually like between five and 10K on different languages. So okay. I think the viewership's nice and we'll, it'll be interesting to see if that's kind of the baseline or if the round of 16 um, is gonna because be Because they're actually gonna make a show out of it as well. I mean, they're working on the studios and yeah. they're actually gonna have them. So there. there's a couple of days left and is it next Monday, Tuesday? Yeah, Which next Tuesday. Tuesday, yes. Uh, is when the round of 16 kicks off. Okay, so right, cool. so we'll check out that when it happens. Uh, we're going over to Korea now for some of the uh, Premier League, mm-hmm. actually on the website, uh, they don't have a tag called Premier League for the Korean uh, no. wiki. It's called Code S. Yeah, actually, you can bring yeah, it up. I mean, this Look, is something that is. I've talked about a lot when it comes to. God damn to... it, Griff, press buttons faster. This is something that I. God I've damn it. Yeah, it's very good. Talked More. about a lot when it comes to, uh, you know, labeling. This, in my opinion, should be labeled WCS Premier League Korea. It's a part of what Blizzard are making, that's what I believe it should be called. Um, Mr. Che tweeted about a week ago when Caldor was talking about America shouldn't be called Code S and Code A because it's not as good as Korea. And then people were like, well, it's a Blizzard thing. It doesn't matter what's better and what's not. Yeah, and then Mr. Caldor che came lives. into it and Mr. Che said, we will never call it Premier League. All the he organizers no in Korea that. want it to be called Code S and Code A. They don't like Premier Challenger League. I... Disagree. I mean, disagree that the, it should be called that, but whatever his feelings are towards it, I still think it should be. It's My question weird. is just like, how much money does Blizzard have to give them to make them use the name that well, they lined Blizzard up for them to use? Blizzard have been giving money to GOM TV for a fucking long time. Yeah, so exactly. They, they should like, literally just be like, yes, we'll call it what you want. Until yeah, you know, yeah. oh, maybe it's because they got a nice World of Tanks um, contract. <laughs> <and> they, <laughs> and then they're like, wow, Olympia. Blizzard. Fuck them, we just do World of Tanks. Um, but the thing is, a lot of people argue that it, it's, it will always be code S in my heart, people say. But eventually, it's just growing pains. If you call it Premier League for enough time, it will become Premier League. It won't be code S anymore. It's just that people aren't willing to uh, do that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Gomon and other organizations aren't I've as been, well. I mean, I've been calling my dick nine inches for, and it's worked. See, it's, I mean, there's, there's this guy in chat that says everyone knows it's code S. Changing it's fucking stupid. Well, no. <laughs> No, you're wrong. Sorry. Um, oh, 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 take that. What's his name? What's his name? <laughs> that guy? I don't know. Ban Look. him. Ban his ass, Apollo. Yeah. It should be. I mean, from Blizzard's stuff, it should be. Yeah, Premier it should League. be Premier it League. League. It, should, it be. should be Premier League. Yeah. Premier League Korea. It's, it's just fucking retarded that they would have it different, uh, differently branded. Because at the end of the day, Blizzard are essentially doing, making this happen. Uh, the majority of it. And that's a pretty big majority. And yeah, you, I mean, want, you want to have at least... Like, when new people come in. I think there's a big perception in the community that if, like, Blizzard wasn't doing WCS and they were just completely hands-off, we'd just have the GS- GSL as the GSL has been. But I think the fact is that people don't recognize enough is that if not for Blizzard supporting GOM, we wouldn't have the GSLs. the GSLs look like for the past two some odd years. But so. could they be thinking down the line as well, if WCS ever were to fade out, they would still have the brand recognition of Code S and Code A. Of course, yeah. And that's, that's uh, probably the Code reason Code S and Code A were still Blizzard funded. I mean, they were still Blizzard know. funded, certainly, but the, the brand. Well, I don't know how much. This is me speculating, but as far as no. I, I can tell, um, yeah. So, um, so with the Korean results, there was a group of deaf Apollo, and apparently you won lots of money, didn't you? Lost $90. Oh. You farted. Yeah. It fucking really smells over here. <laughs> <laughs> really bad, this guy. That's a shame. Sorry, I put you on the spot. I'm, the thing um, is, look, we're at the time limit. I'm just trying to do James a favor, right? We got a couple more keep, minutes. Keep going, Mike. Uh, yeah, the group Release of death the uh, containing Flash, Life, Parting, and Invasion. Fucking sick. Really cool group. Well, wait, wait. Stop harassing me. What? Oh. No, the so it's, uh, it's their group B. Yeah, group B. Um, 
this is basically the top four of any tournament. At this current point in the in the meta game in StarCraft Two and in, in uh, Heart of the Swarm, that's the top four of GSL. Whatever you call the other groups, that's the top four. Um, it was more of an ego, willy waving contest, as, as you want to call it. Willy Well, I guess I said the F word earlier. I might as well go all out with this one. Um, innovation. Oh, how is it? it? It was it was parting that started. Who chose life because they have a rivalry? Life then chose innovation. innovation because they have a rivalry. And innovation was quoted saying, "Well, with me and the group, with three of us, it's already the group of death. Might as well invite Flash in." And he chose Flash because <laughs> that's how the group selection's done. Well, they got to choose who. Basically, well, that's how, how the group selection is based done. on GSL points and, yeah. and ranks in the last season. The top four seeded players pick their opponents, and then those opponents pick those. It makes for a very good dramatic. Yeah, thing yeah. with interesting groups. Storylines, James. Story. I while we're on that subject, while yeah. we're on that subject, now let's compare this to WCS EU and WCS NA. Do they get group selection? Is it a global unified format? Do no, they, they have to do group selection no, now? I am saying no because you know, but like they don't. If they don't, then it's unfair. It's not the same because it's all Blizzard points, man. It's not fair. <sighs> Oh. James, I, I'll fix it. Okay, I'll it's not it. fair. I'll do it after. If it's not unified, I'll do it after my homework. The most fun part is going to the map pool because the map pool they all have different map pools right now, <laughs> and that's uh, also not fair. So yeah, that's another. Okay. Uh... So would you, if you were captain of ESL, mm. would you have group selection like Code S? I'd fucking kill myself if I was captain of ESL. I mean, the thing is, it's. Uh, but if you didn't kill yourself from I... being captain of ESL, would you? I think it would be a, the problem is they're going to be flying these players in as they need to play for the round of 16. So there's no prep time, there's no nothing. So I don't think it's feasible for this season. But I think the sooner they can get it in, the better it will be. Because I mean the the Korean group selection is entertaining, but if you actually have these 16 European players, it's going to be 10 times more entertaining. Like it's going to be really yep. as long as you have someone like good and not awkward hosting it. Um, you would do a good job hosting. I think. James. I like. I. Yeah, I. I mean, if you could like identify any of the players and stuff me you you think i can host you <laughs> shall we move on you <laughs> <Wankers. Um. laughs> anyway can host can't act um, yeah, we're moving on. We've got Challenger League qualifiers complete in NA, underway in EU. We kind of looked at those a little bit already, right? Yes. Did you scroll up? No. Oh. And then uh, last thing in WCS and also okay. StarCraft 2, uh, GOM TV not broadcasting entirely okay. uh, the, the entirety of Challenger League. <laughs> Cherry picking half of the round of 48 and 52 How fucked matches. up is that? Pick me! Pick me! I want to hear so what the Sam was going to say. No, no, not Sam, with me. <laughs> The only <laughs> model of successful revenue that, that ah, everyone go ahead, Paul. Go ahead. Talking. Everyone needs to listen to this because this is important. The only true source of revenue in StarCraft 2. No, wait, Jay, let me finish. I'm trying to help you. Let me finish. What do you want to say quickly? I think your mic's muted because Script no, 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 no. muted it. It's not. Oh. It's not. The only sustainable money that StarCraft 2 has actually seen. Properly, not investment money, actual money, generating money, making money, you know, that, whatever that sentence is, is GOM TV subscription. That's the model that GOM worked on and made it successful, and now it's down the toilet. Because why would you subscribe when Titch, uh, Twi Titch? Twitch offers free, H this company offers free HD for WCS? Now, why would you subscribe to get HD over there? Now, you get HD over there still. Yeah, but I mean, but why would you pay for it when you can watch for it for vibes, free? For vods. But vods is yes, but <laughs> you kind of got me before I finished. Shut up! What are you on about? It's the you can make a great lawyer. Ah, uh, guys, you're all putting me go, off. Go, 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 just do it. Okay. You, wait a minute. You put me off. I was going to say something really good. <laughs> One minute, Your Honor. Can I? Um, wait, wait. No, don't say anything. Five. Four, three. Don't three, say anything either. What? It, I, <laughs> you threw me off. It was about money and subscriptions. And what have they taken away? Yes, the Challenger League. That's another thing they've taken away from the subscribers. Which kind of sucks. 
Okay, let me just explain for people who don't know. Essentially, Pace closed. See, this is the hardcore StarCraft nerd what? that pays subscription money that isn't getting his money worth anymore. I don't like the way... Adam BC, explain. I don't like the way you're coming in there, pointing at people, or telling people to shut up just because you've worked out for like a few months. But, but, no, but it's not that I understand how esports should work, James. Let, and let this me, is breaking it. Blizzard no. are breaking the only source of income that Gone no, has no, this is wrong. by this is changing wrong it reasons. with money. This All is right? wrong for reasons other than that, because what they're doing here is if they were like, sorry guys, our broadcast schedule, we, we can't do the round of 48, but we're doing all the round of 32. But what they're doing here, and this is what I find most expensive, is they're cherry picking certain games. So like, oh, he's a big name. People want to see that. Exactly. Oh, he's a big name. And, and But it's like, this is it like, is this a competition or is this a game show? Because if it's a competition, then every match is equal. And if, if you're a player who qualified for GSL, part of that is you play... And it gets streamed, and right. you get this. Yeah. Well, okay. So I guess. Well, this is another thing because I think the WCS contract, they like they don't have to broadcast those. So like they only have to because Challenger League in North America and Europe is smaller. So you only have to broadcast. I think. I think there's 24. Maybe. Maybe it's only actually it's 16. I think in North America. So you only have to mandatory broadcast those certain games. So now Golem is like, well. We, what we used to do, what they used to do is they would do four best of threes that are completely paywalled, pay-per-view. You have to be a premium subscriber to get them. Even the light subscription package wouldn't get you these. Mm. And then the next group of four best of threes that day, then they would be open. They'd be normal, crappy quality and whatnot. But now that they can't paywall them, they're just like, let's fuck it, fuck it entirely. And mm. like they post on Team Liquid saying about scheduling issues, but their schedule isn't Have you heard at all. any sort of feedback from the teams about this decision? Because I feel like this imp impacts not only the players, but the teams the most. Because the whole reason a team gets excited that their player gets it further into the round coverage. is that that's more coverage I mean, for their sponsors. If that's they're more on this for everything involving that team. point, it's only so, paid people that watch it, so it's not as high. It was, it was always unfair values. in the first place yeah. because they were paywalling certain yeah. teams and not sure. others, so they would pay while the unpopular but I mean, this but seems I mean, like the thing absolutely the ridiculous teams, to me for the teams i mean for four, I, i'm for, trying to figure out what you want them to do from um, this conversation if they're not that's, gonna, all, that's all i want to hear if, right for me if they're not going to broadcast um all of challenger league they can't play favorites and exclude certain okay, players from so. getting their chance to be broadcast so they have to yeah. instead of doing half of the round of 48 and half of the round of 32 they do all the round of 32. yeah if okay. that's all right, so you want them, all right? Um, Apollo, you I'm financially, really... financially, you were upset At because of Blizzard's this. not gone. Okay, and so what do you want to happen? Yeah, it's, the so there's nothing that can be happen because it's all in motion. There's nothing that you can't do now because of this. I just feel that they, now Blizzard, have broken the only true source of, of revenue that StarCraft has seen, which GOM had, and that no longer exists anymore. And if WCS goes... How are GOM going to build what they used to have? I think when, you, gonna... when you say true source of like revenue, I think you mean um, it's better to say, yeah. The subscription know, the, model. Yeah, they're, the customer, they're... customer payments yeah. as opposed to anything else. And that's because how they actually... You make money off Twitch TV, you make money off um, sponsors, but, but they are... Twitch yeah. TV, they don't make much off Twitch TV, GOM. They never did. Yeah, exactly. But, so... the, but the point is, it's, it's actually customers handing over money to um, watch esports, which is actually a beautiful thing because that's what really needs to happen. So you're just mainly upset that they broke that um, system that GOM yeah. had in place. Yeah. Okay. But I don't think people, I think that I'm pretty sure that all the subscription numbers are just plummeting right now for GOM. Even I pulled out, man. Hence the large sum <laughs> of money that out. they're receiving from Blizzard. <laughs> they they brand. never pull out. I'm joking, I didn't pull out. But um, a lot tried, of people. Apollo, you're Welsh. Come on. Do you, do you honestly think Welsh though, people that, don't that, pull that out. GOM would go into this agreement in. with Blizzard you know, regarding I'm WCS rubbish, and right. not have well, they have foreseen to. this? Not have foreseen this. They have to go into this. Remuneration. Yeah, but it's. I mean, their biggest it, driver of sub, well, one of the biggest is that they pay while HD. Blizzard says you can't pay while HD. It removes incentives to subscribe. It's just what it is. And it's not like they're getting a choice about it. I mean, Gome can't be like, no, we're going to pay while the HD. And then Blizzard's yeah. like, well, all right, we're going to well, work with OSL. Like, but I mean, you, can, you can, I mean, you can just be like, uh, by doing this, you're essentially, you know, like Apollo is so outraged about, uh, you're, you're killing our... our Financial model here, like yeah, well, help us I out. I don't know how time, good the subscription how, model actually is. No, I mean, it's very good. You're getting one hundred and ten dollars a year. Right, or something. Well, I think we're like going in yeah, yeah. here, anyways. But also, think of it this way, right? Here's a subscription model, and then here's Blizzard coming in, being like, "We want you to run WCS Korea. Here's more money." Yeah. Subscription model. Yeah, but is exactly. Money. Well, let's exactly. say that Blizzard stops doing this after a couple of years because it doesn't work. But that's, then what? that was the point that was being made with the uh, branding as well with Codex and Codex. Yeah, future Blizzard and Gom TV worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> that's my saying, James. 
right. so I just we, think uh, they broke one of the only good things. Blizzard broke one of the only from, good things. Well, for they've done a bunch of that. It's Are we going to see a whole lot of community tournaments? Uh, but uh, I mean, that's that's just me. I mean, Blizzard obviously know they've done that, and obviously, you know, know the consequences. So we'll we'll see if they can uh, keep things going for real. All right then. So we'll leave it at that for the StarCraft segment. And uh, before we uh, pull out here, Apollo. Um, anything you guys just want to say that people should be watching uh, over the course of the week until next show? And then we're moving to Dota 2 with Bruno. Um, things to watch is just WCS. Just I mean, and WCS <laughs> that's, that's, that's kind of <laughs> That right. kind of proves the point. Yeah. Right. That's uh, yeah. the only thing to there you watch. Go. Showcraft America, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Who do you think is going to win it? The viewers. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. Good answer. America. See you after the break for some Dota 2 action.